Ciao, mi chiamo, chino my darling. And that is all the Italian I'll be speaking because I can't really speak a lot of it. I know, but shh. Hey y'all, it's Cinema Darling, and today I want to talk to y'all about a big part of my heritage, and that is Italian culture. Last year I did a video on Southern cinema and all the films that embody the southern culture and are just really popular here down the south because I live in the south but I want to talk about another big part of my personal heritage and that is being Italian and there are so many beautiful 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 things about Italy I love Italy I've been there several times because I have relatives that live there and we visit them and I'm actually going to be leaving to go there tomorrow so I'm just so excited and one of the most gorgeous parts about Italy has got to be the Italian cinema and the movies that have come out from this industry. To get into the spirit of Italian cinema and just talking about Italy, I have this little Italian bandana. So if you unroll it, it's a huge Italian flag and I just decided to put it in a little bow because you know what? Bows make everything better. And so what I'll be doing in this video is I'm going to be talking about five Italian films that have change the way we may look at film if you think about it but have definitely most definitely changed the Italian film industry so without further ado let's get into it so the very first film I want to talk about is the incredibly iconic 1960 film La Dolce Vita this is my copy on Criterion Dolce Vita is directed by Federico Fellini who is a landmark director in the Italian film industry and this film is about the glamorous and rich Romans of the 1960s and you just see how superficial their lives are and you see it all through this journalist and there's so many little stories everywhere and it is two hours and 54 minutes yeah it, it's a it's an epic it, it really reminded me of how America has Gone with the Wind or Lawrence of Arabia, they have La Dolce Vita. Maybe not to the same caliber, but in the grand scale. For me personally, I really appreciate and respect La Dolce Vita. I really do. It's not one of my favorite films from Italian cinema personally. I think it is very, very long. It's unnecessarily long. I feel like it does get a little muddled in the story like I understand there's 800 different little things going on and I guess for me I started to lose focus towards the end and even though it was interesting getting to see these rich and glamorous and just lavish people partying and everything but you could see there was an underlying under the skin type of feel of yeah this is totally frivolous and there needs to be more to life and Federico Fellini is one of those directors who loves to to really explore that question of what really is the meaning of life and I really do appreciate it don't get me wrong I think the costuming in here is absolutely gorgeous it won an Oscar for best costume design I do recommend every single film lover go out and watch it it is one of those films you do need to watch at least once in your life for sure now the next film I'll be talking about is the 1963 Eight and a Half that is also directed by Federico Fellini and it follows this director who is trying to make a film but he gets like a writer's block, a creativity block and all this random stuff begins to happen. I do like this film more than La Dolce Vita because the story is more honed in and focused. Once again I just feel like it was very like yes it was focused but there were so many random things going on it was like you you almost for me at least it was like for, I was just really taken aback and the length is good here though at least it did win for best foreign for the 1963 year the thing with Federico Fellini that I have noticed with his directing is that he really does like getting into these really you know these big philosophical questions about life and I may not be the biggest biggest fan of how he portrays these questions but I really do respect him as a director and I respect the filming and the filmmaking because it is beautifully done and beautifully shot and beautifully active. I just may need to give this in La Dolce Vita another chance. Let's move on to the 1988 Cinema Paradiso. This is directed by Giuseppe Tornatore and this follows a little boy who lives in Sicilia or Sicily and he befriends this man named Alfredo and Alfredo works at this movie theater the Paradiso and he rolls the film for when everyone goes and sees these movies and he teaches little Toto the craft and we see how his life has changed because of this friendship with Alfredo 
This is by far my absolute favorite Italian film that I have seen thus far. This is such an amazing, amazing film, y'all. The problem that I had with La Dolce Vita and Eight and a Half was that I didn't feel like we had a clear, clear, clear story that we could completely follow 100%. With Cinema Paradiso, we do. We have a very strong and excellent story from start to finish. And your eyes are glued to the screen. Also, just the whole love for film, because I love film, and just seeing it portrayed in this beautiful, beautiful way of how we see the classic films and how, you know, they had to wind the film and how back in the day with the Catholic Church and everything, the priest would come in and dictate like, okay, there's a kiss right there, you have to cut it, no one can see that, because goodness gracious, it's very inappropriate, right? And it's just so beautiful, and the emotions here are so well done. It, it goes from happy to sad to joyous to anger to beauty, and I love this film so much. I know it won Best Foreign, and it deserved that 108%. Probably should have won Best Picture, if we're really being honest. Now the next film I'll be talking about is the 1997 Life is Beautiful, directed by Roberto Benigni. This won Best Actor for Roberto Benigni, and it won Best Foreign and Best Music. And this was a huge film, not only in Italy, obviously, and around the world. This film really captured the hearts of many because it is both hilarious and heartbreaking, which is very hard to convey in a film, I feel like. This film does it perfectly, though. Because the first half of this film, you are getting to know the characters and you are given the amazing chance to just fall in love with these characters who are living during the time of World War II and Roberto Benigni is an Italian Jew who is obviously low-key terrified that something horrible is going to happen to him and his family. And it's a beautiful, beautiful romance and just seeing how joyous it was just really like warmed my heart and then when we get to the more horrible parts of when they're all put in a concentration camp and you see all the struggles that happen but how you see Roberto Benigni try to just make it a better place for his son who's in this concentration camp just kind of make it like a game almost to just make sure he doesn't get hurt it is just so beautiful. It really just was a beautiful, beautiful portrayal of a father-son relationship. And I loved how it was done this whole I know some people really hate this film. I mean, I guess if you don't like it, you don't like it. But for me, it was a really good film because you go from, oh, you know, it's funny, it's joyful, it's smiley, to, oh my gosh, it's just sad, even though there are laughs during the more sad parts. But I love how the transition never felt too abrupt, for me at least. I was glued to the screen just like I was with Cinema Paradiso because this also has a very strong story as well. It was a very good story to follow. This film is truly beautiful and the ending definitely will make you tear up, just like Cinema Paradiso. And the last film that I will be talking about in regards to beautiful Italian cinema is a very, very recent film, the 2013 The Great Beauty. This is on Criterion. Criterion's got that Italian cinema game strong, I gotta tell y'all. This film is directed by Paolo Sorrentino, and it follows an Italian novelist. He is basically the king of the parties and the nightlife in Rome of the rich and glamorous. Yeah, you see that parallelism to La Dolce Vita, right? This film won Best Foreign for the 2013 year. And it is, let me just say, it is a beautiful, beautiful, breathtaking film. There are some gorgeous, gorgeous shots in here that Sorrentino gets. There is one beautiful shot of this man right here, this main character. I don't know why I had to point him out, but him. He is like on this like canopy and then he leaves and you see this beautiful just sunset with the Coliseum and I had to rewind it because it was so so beautiful and there's even more beautiful shots in the film. I do feel like the story it's very very pretentious and the thing is with pretentious films I'm still trying to find my taste in pretentious films because I do respect them like I do respect this film it's obviously got a lot going on under the skin and there are a lot of scenes where you know okay something's going on beneath it's not supposed to be just face front like okay this is all there is and there are a lot of once again philosophical life questions like how La Dolce Vita was but this is more so like a current updated La Dolce Vita, I would say. I don't want to say like, oh, it's La Dolce Vita 2.0, because it's not really. It's just its own take, maybe. Like, I know a lot of people compare the two. If I had to choose between the two, I think it's 
I don't know if it's an unfair comparison, but for me, I'd probably choose the Great Beauty more so because I can relate to it more because this was only made three years ago. La Dolce Vita was made decades ago, but both are really great films. Just once again, this does fall into the trap of we're just watching this man go through his life and all the parties and all the things he does, and it's very lavish and superficial. Obviously, there's something going on under the skin because he's talking about life and how, like, what is life? You know, it's like, is life just partying and going out and just sleeping with a ton of gals, even though he's, like, 65? And that's pretty awkward, right? If you are into beautiful cinematography and beautiful direction, please do check it out for sure. So those are all the films that really, I just have really enjoyed watching from Italian cinema. And it really just shows that Italians really know how to just make masterful, masterful films with a ton of emotion and really good stories and good acting. I just really love how the Italians do it. They do it with so much emotion and rawness and just genuineness. So that is it for now. I hope all y'all have an absolutely wonderful day and stay classy. Ooh, I should go. Arrivederci!